Are we really alone in the galaxy? Infinite stars surround our world. And aeons ago, intelligent life must have emerged somewhere and slowly evolved into a spacefaring society. Like us, surely these beings would have been drawn to explore. So then, where is everyone? Is it simply the nature of intelligent life to destroy? And maybe the only signs of life they're able to send are in a brief window before that world perishes. Still, no one has come, and no radio signals can be detected across our silent galaxy. Could civilizations ever cross thousands of light years and find more than alien graves? Maybe it's just pure luck that greed or catastrophe have not yet ended our species. right choices? Might we learn from our mistakes? Will you overcome the Fermi Paradox? The Fermi Paradox. The Fermi Paradox. Welcome to the Fermi Paradox, where today we are going to try to make a civilization as far and wide as possible. I've tried to play this game before, I've uh, heard about it a lot. It's similar-ish to, to like the evolution games in general, but it takes a, a much more grand scale to everything. Let me show you what I mean. So this is what I mean by grand scale. There's, mm, yes, you are a galactic gardener. Sapient life will evolve and prosper within this galaxy. Help these civilizations to grow and find each other in the vastness of space-time. But be aware, sometimes you have to prevent them from destroying themselves or others. Would you like to play the tutorial? Uh, I pretty much know what I'm doing. I don't need no tutorial. It's fine. Anyway, this is what I mean by grand scale. We have a bunch of planets right here. Life will evolve, do their stuff. And we are just kind of here existing until we find something interesting to do. Our main resource is synthesis, which uh, each time there is those little flares popping up, uh, will essentially the game pauses itself and we have to select either a choice or one of the flares and what to take for example right now all we have is blank ones so synthesis uh let's just take a random one earthquakes open up enormous rifts below one of vex's c regions right and so we keep going on let's see alpha century two major species in proxima century b begin to interbreed and an evolution event in the Gliese system, which is over here. Let's check the evolution event. Sapient life evolving on Gliese C. A new civilization is born. A life form on the desert planet Gliese C has started making simple tools and has developed a rudimentary language. But which species will form a stone age civilization within the Gliese system? And also one thing about this game that I really really like is those quotes right down here. Many were increasingly of the opinion that they'd all make a big mistake in coming down from the trees in the first place. Douglas Adams is a sci-fi author of the 20th century, oh, apparently. Uh, Douglas Adams. Don't know who that is, but smart man. Anyway, let us check what species we have. We have an unbalanced species. Please eat, uh, what the hell? Okay, 
Uh, Gliese, a red dwarf star, is orbited by the desert planet Gliese C and various rocky planets, uh, which I guess are empty and devoid of life. The iron oxide in the atmosphere gives the rocky desert of the planet Gliese C a distinct reddish color. All animals on the planet's surface carry additional water reservoirs in specialized organs so they can survive in the desert. Huge hypersaline lakes divide the land regions between their south crystal shores. Vast forests of transparent flower trees are flourishing. Sounds actually kind of beautiful. But we have a choice of an unbound species that gives us 20 synthesis if we choose this. But it has a bunch of uh, negative traits, but a lot more population. Uh, the car, those bird-like people. Always hungry and merciless, these nightmarish avian creatures rule the sky. Then we have a standard species, aka what would any way evolve on there, if given a chance. The Rao, aggressive and solitary, these naturally armored creatures inhabit barren wastelands. And then we also have balanced species. Also, you do notice everyone has like different bonuses. Ah, the Prune. Peaceful observers, these gentle herds of four-eyed horse-like humanoid roam the wide rock deserts. Right, but it cost us 30 synthesis in order to even select. So, do we want to waste synthesis that could be useful for the future prevention of an apocalypse, as we saw in the trailer before, or not? Of course, I'm going with standard species, because I don't want to run balanced right now. I don't need to maintain so much. And they look cool. I mean, look at them. They look cool. I'm literally going off by looks. Sue me. And there it is. Gleesy is the home of the Rayo Drifts. There, as you can see, their uh, technological level is slowly increasing. Uh, there is a growth, they have a 6% growth chance, uh, uh, or not chance, 6% growth speed, that's pretty good. But in 6,189 years, they will have a research problem with the beast herds. The potential casualties of if they are to go to war is in 200,000, which for 1.6 million isn't that much. It's, yeah, harm potential, 2%. And ethical values. Now, this is kind of important, but never within the game itself. It has a certain reason, at least from what I know. I played this a little bit. It's an interesting game. Right now, we only have to choose Synthesis once more. What a surprise. On Glissy, the Rhea civilization is born. Ah, there it is. Do we want to A. Bake off a little bit of tech level, aka present basically decrease the speed of their tech advancement do we want to increase their ethical values towards an utopian world or do we want to increase the population looking at the fact that they have only six thousand years of resources left population growth will be detrimental they have only nine thousand beasters left in addition having less science is not ideal taken that they are living in a stone age however Ethical values are good. Or we can just go outside, choose none, and just get a flare. Random one. I would say we're going to pick ethical values. And there it is. 1%. The Rayo compose an epic poem recounting the history. And they already have a developmental event. That is interestingly fast. Knowledge in Gliese. Ooh, that looks cool. Songs of Knowledge. The Rayo create long and beautiful songs full of deep knowledge about the world and their people. These songs are memorized, improved, and taught from generation to generation. So, oral history. Lesche Faramorophore. The Cotton System. Wrong system, but apparently a made up quote. We are the song walkers. We bring you music of your ancestors, the dance of the gods, and the lyrics of wisdom. Hatchlings, listen to the wind and to the water. Listen to your hearts and your souls. 1,000 years before the awakening. Hmm. Suspicious. And by that I mean intriguing. And here we have, we have a choice. Do we want to? Absolutely zero. So basically, those don't give us anything. This costs synthesis. So, dead end. Quickly the songs are filled with false information and become useless. Soon to be forgotten. Something that would happen in real life. But not to those species. Those species look interesting. 
The songs helped around the spread and preserve knowledge and civilization pillar. These songs are crucial for the society of Rayo. They sing them constantly, and those who master the songs are chosen to lead their tribes. So basically, a little bit of technocracy I can already sense, as in song masters, those who remember the most, get to lead the tribe. You know what? Why not? It's free. Let's make it a civilization pillar. New technological age for Rayo. And here comes in synthesis. They reached copper age. The Rayo learned to mine copper, using it to create precise metal tools. These, to uh, these tools make it possible to expand the reach of na uh, natural oasi oasis using new irrigation and water recapture techniques. Meanwhile, wise folk begin to study the stars above Glee's sea, charting their course in great patterns drawn in desert sands. Rael Rael Shashan Alpha and Dramatic Cluster. The last show, uh, show Shonan died in her home world several millennia ago. We no longer have records from this time, but several excellent examples of copper jewelry were found preserved beneath the desert sands. Alright. Right, so here it comes. Do we uh, make it into power? Oh, look at that! They have new hats! Oh, that looks cool. War caravans and domestic rapists become an integral part of early armies. Warring clans fight for control of precious oasis. The rare flora and the desert is carefully cultivated to serve rail. More nutritious, more drought resistant varieties are bred over decades. Or wisdom. And Weisfolk began recording the first observations of the heavens. On the Copper Age, not yet. We're going to just pick advancement instead of wisdom or power. Power comes later. Advancement first. Because deposits and resource scarcity is one of the worst things that can happen. Anyway. <gasps> soul system evolution event. There's a soul system? There is. On the other side of the entire galaxy. Right, we know who are we going to pick. A life born on the garden planet Earth that has started making simple tools and developed languages. Yes. Uh, yes, the, the quotes and stuff kind of repeats. So, in a way, that's bad. Yes, I have to foster. Oh god, we could just get dinosaurs. A giant fed reptiles with small brains. They hunt and eat. Dolphin! <laughs> we can pick dolphins! But no, we're gonna be humans. Just humans. Sol, a yellow dwarf star, is orbited by the garden planet Earth and various rocky inner planets and outer gas giants. Kinda. On the northern hemisphere of planet Earth, remarkable fjords can be found. The flora of Earth is very multifaceted, from bright ocean vegetation to vast rainforest jungles. Until humans came along, the fauna of Earth consists of many different animals, from gigantic ocean creatures to millions of different insects. Let's get humans. It is home to the human tribes. And the development element already. Yeah, you cannot really stop in this game because there's always an event, always a choice, always something to think about. And it goes one after another and it just keeps on going and going and going. Deity of Love. The Rea formed a growing cult around Deity of Love, Lust and Fertility. The followers of the goddess wander the lands and direct shrines and temples to her. Homer, 4th century BC. Ooh. Golden Aphrodite, who stirs up sweet passion in the gods and subdues the tribes of mortal men. There is nothing among the blessed gods or among mortal men that has escaped Aphrodite. True. True. Shit. Oh, what is this one? This is a new sign. Oh, Hedeonistic Culture. So if you hover over it, Hede, uh, Hedeonistic Culture status will be added. No. Yeah, no, it's just going to be a regular development, which is going to cost 10 synthesis. Yeah. But I'm going to keep their growth down if possible. But, oh, this one. Resources. I always click that. No matter what happens, this is always one. A development event of human tribes. A great war threatened soul. We just got out of the Stone Age, but yeah, makes sense. Headhunting. The humans collect the heads of their defeated foes. Only the Mongols. These trophies are very prestigious and further conflicts are started in order to obtain more of them. Lock the target, bait the line, spread the net and catch the man. Hmm. Alright. Oh no. <sighs> yeah. 
there is just peace because as you can see usually such things yeah yeah let's just put peace down peace we don't need them development event of ray of love territories paradigm shift the fertile geyser after an earthquake a massive geyser is drastically sea surface spewing thousands of liters of water each time it erupts these eruptions are cyclic every few decades they begin turning the surrounding desert into fertile land for several years before going dormant once more any water in the desert will do sorry arabian proverb yes it's a proverb good to know the rare reached the glass age already a new age New techniques are discovered to create a special form of iron glass that can be used for a variety of, variety of uses. More advanced tools, simple machinery, and even weapons are made from this new material. What glass? Soon great cities begin to rise among the endless dunes of clay sea. Those who live in the glass houses shouldn't throw stones. Yeah, they do live in the glass house. Righteous system evolution. Yes? What world is Rigel? Rigel, a blue supergiant star, is orbited by an ice planet Rigel 7 and three small stars in proximity. Oh, so it's a trinary system. The chemical compositions of the ice crystals on Rigel 7 gives the polar caps a greenish color. Uh, for an ice planet, Rigel 7 has that rich diversity of resilient flora. Every animal on the planet develops some kind of fur, even the ocean fish and the bird species. Right, balance species. The Ash, a rational species of furry fish, creatures with very complex swan behavior. Uh, the Kular, aggressive humanoid pig creatures, wandering dice planes primarily to compete with the rest of their kin. That's gonna be very aggressive, don't like that. The Torowolf, a sentient resilient plants that dwell deep under the ice, rise at nightfall to wander the surface and feed on organisms for nutrients. Uh, I would say balanced species. Let's get the Ash. Yeah, let's get the ash, simply because they're like, I, uh, none of the other options are good. These are just living plants, and they don't really belong in an ice biome. Ice, yeah, and these are way too aggressive for me. I don't like species being too aggressive, because I know exactly where they're going. Right, on Rigel 7, a civilization is born, and instantly gets thousands of seaweed pots and lots of resources, and my god, that's amazing. Let's just make them very friendly. So, power in Glees. The Sand Stalkers. Hunted by life in the desolate wastes, one love realm creates an elite group of desert skirmishers, known as the Sand Stalkers. Stealthy and deadly. The sand circles are known for extraordinary feats of patience and discipline. Monks, okay. Sometimes burying themselves in sands for days at a time before leaping out to strike. When you take your stand along the maker's path, you must remain utterly still. You must think like a patch of sand, hide beneath their cloak and become a little dune in your very essence. Dune by Frank Herbert. Oh yeah! The Dune movie. Yeah, there, there is a new one coming out as well and I cannot wait. I like Dune. Injustice in Seoul, well, like always, <laughs> burning of the temples. Due to an obscure reading of their holy texts, some humans come to believe that they will become immortal if they burn down their own holy temples. Raising these sacred sites without consequence will prove that they themselves are godlike. If Herostratus has earned immortality for having burned down the temple of Artemis in Esphos, maybe the man from who he got the matches ought not to be entirely forgotten. Uh -huh. Hmm. Regular development. When the burning of the first temple is met with divine retribution, the practice spreads rapidly. Major centers are worship, uh, of worship are burned in a fever, uh, pursuit of immortality, leading to mass riots and grieving of the faithful. After the fledgling sect accidentally sets themselves alight when trying to douse temple in a pitch, the human sees this as a divine retribution and practice is stopped immediately. To be honest, that sounds very human. <laughs> We lost a lot of synthesis from that. God damn, I hope you're grateful, you little fucks. Anyway, that would actually be a very good thing to have some utopia for humans. Oh, extinction. All right, volcanic catastrophe. A series of massive volcanic eruptions threatens the existence of the humans. 
poisonous side of souls enter the food chain and the atmospheric dust causes drastic climate disturbances on the garden planet Earth. In the darkness you could hear the crying of women, the wailing of infants, and the shouting of men. Some prayed for help, others wished for death, but still more imagined that there were no gods left, and that the universe was plunged into eternal darkness. Pliny the Younger, survivor of the Pompeii. Ooh, it's basically Pompeii! I mean, yeah, minimal survivors still. The eruption destroys most elements and many humans perish in the after effects. In some corners of the garden planet, settlements survive, but the climate impact is not so strong. Yeah, let's go with minimal survivors. Yeah. Mm, we need more growth for them. That's... New technological age. Not the time for it, but sure, Rayo. Industrial age. Already. Interesting. The Rayo start to study electricity, steam power and machine manufacturing in the industrial age. Harnessing the power of radio waves might allow them to send signals into outer space. But this civilization could accidentally eradicate itself, as weapons development has thrusts dwarfed. Interference with the planet poses a serious threat to the ecosystem that has sustained reality through the ages. Modern bourgeois society, with its relations of production and of exchange and property, a society that has conjured up such gigantic means of production and of exchange, is like the sorcerer, who is no longer able to control the powers of the netherworld, whom he has called up by his spells. That sounds stupid. What is it? Karl Marx. Alright. A German philosopher. That sounds... okay. Uh... Uh, this is an explosion in rare potential telecommunications, mass-produced goods, yep, all that stuff. Please is sending signals into space. Oh, that's nice. Propaganda, of course. <laughs> the great heads of states of Gleasy discovered the power of propaganda broadcast via radio messages. Wireless broadcasts reach countless radio with the latest political doctrine. In fact, these signals are so strong that they will reach outer space. And if all others accept the lie which the party imposed, if all records told the same tale, then the lie passed into history and became truth. Who controls the past ran the party's slogan. Controls the future. Who controls the present controls the past. George Orwell, 1984. <laughs> ha ha ha. I hate that it's correct. Right. Uh, uh, the message travels to space, steadily shifting towards the racial system. Ooh, another sapient life uh, on the ocean planet. Okay, right. Ross, a flare star, is orbited only by the ocean planet Virgo. There is no other planets? Oh. The oceans of Virgo are filled with the kelp flora, giving the water distinct red color. Gargantuan seaweed accumulations form the entire continents, drifting to the oceans of Virgo. The labyrinthine coral forest says that at the equators of Virgo are home to millions of jellyfish species. One of them being the Frenner, I'm pretty sure. The Frenner, inhabitants of the equatorial coral forests, these squid people form harmonic and peaceful groups. The Quasis, giant anemone animals wandering the floating seaweed contents of the ocean. The Shivans. Hives of predatory jellyfish creatures, dwelling in the deep sea to breed and raiding the surface for food. To be honest, why not? Let's make a very aggressive species. And new technological age of rayo democratic unions. The digital age. I love how that, that is the only human picture as well so far that we've seen. The rayo are now connected via complex computer systems, satellite networks and mobile communication devices. With their constant interactions in the global supercomputer uh, network and the new digital art forms, cultural transformation is stark and rapid. Preliminary genetic and biodigital experiments could lead to health improvements and longevity, but caution is advised in these and other uncharted territories. The NSA has built an infrastructure that allows it to intercept almost everything. With this capability, the vast majority of the human communications are automatically ingested without targeting. Edward Snowden, Paradigm Shift in Seoul, The Sunken Realm, A mighty burned realm has been flourishing for many years, but a sudden shift of tectonic plates of the garden planet causes their great stale settlements to begin slowly sinking into the ocean. Their ruler responds to the crisis and attempts to bring their people to safety. 
I feel the earth move under my feet. I feel a sky tumbling down, a tumbling down. Carol King. American singer of Panta. Okay. Uh, yeah, to be honest, let's get a cultural expansion. And the Tavillian realms. There it is. And let's get the resources back. At least there are burn realms anymore, so at least that uh, expanding upon the culture is good. I didn't want to make a turnover because that, I don't have that much synthesis. Ooh, question mark. Ooh, rare democratic groups have a development event. Powering lease. Ooh, that's a tank. Special commandos. Oh, wait, so basically like the sand whatever that was before, but just an upgrade version. The Rower training elite soldier squads to conduct covert military operations around the globe. Yes, Spec Ops. Their mission range from destroying enemy infrastructure and eliminating high-value targets to deploying weapons of mass destroy. Ah, this is my rifle. There are many like it, but this one is mine. My rifle is my best friend. It is my life. I must master it as I must master my life. Without me, my rifle is useless. Without my rifle, I am useless. Yeah, that's literally... <laughs> yeah, that's United States, baby. <laughs> Absolute power. <laughs> I'll just get special command and provide military with strategic victory using minimal resources. Yeah, that's pretty much what it happens. Wow, do, I love how the harm potential just went from 20 million to 26 and I snap off a finger. <laughs> like, hello, you can kill more. Are we living in a computer simulation? Heh, <laughs> heh. No comment without the presence of a lawyer or a legal representative. Ooh, a ray of democratic groups have another technological age. A cyber age. Oh no. With rapid advancements in artificial intelligence and technologically augmented rail, the civilization undergoes drastic change and reaches the new milestone of science, engineering, and arts. He still dreamed of cyberspace, hope fading nightly. All the speed he took, all the, uh, the turns he'd taken, and the corners he'd cut in Night City. And he'd still see the matrix in his sleep, bright lattices of logic unfolding across the colorless void. Neuromancer by William Gibson. Night City, huh? I've heard that one before. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's give them more wisdom. Their technocracy, essentially. The Ray can now build mass metroplexes, urbanizing the entire surface. In either case, I will leave this episode of the Fermi Paradox right here. We have four different planets that we can currently, you know, we have to foster and care for. However, if you want to see more and see where this entire expedition of the Galactic Colony leads, I'm betting on rare democratic multitudes myself, personally. But leave your own thoughts and comments down below. But until next time, uh, next Sunday that is, I don't know if I'm going to continue this one or some other games. Leave your thoughts again down below, because if I know how to entertain you, that's going to be a win-win situation, just generally speaking. However, thank you everybody for watching. Thank you everyone for being here. If you want to join my Discord, that's also in the description. And until next time, I have been Ethereal, do the network, over and out. Bye!